All right, let's dive into some juicy stories. Picture this. A 14-year-old kid, filled with dreams and talent, suddenly finds himself at a ditty party. Now that's not your typical teenage hangout. Where's the school, the sports, and the video games? But here comes Usher, wide-eyed and ready to soak up everything the music world has to offer, even if it means jumping headfirst into the wild and glittering chaos of Puff Daddy's world. Now, let's be real. Usher never claimed to be a victim, and there's no legal spotlight on him. At least not yet. But come on, what's a kid doing in that scene? Even Usher himself has reflected on how crazy that ride was. At 14 years old, you're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? Hell no, he said, highlighting just how absurd that whole situation was. And while he's kept much of it under wraps, there's been some chatter with Jaguar claiming there's leaked footage floating around out there. But let's hit rewind and dig into the backstory between Usher and Diddy. It's a classic tale of mentorship tangled up with the wild ride of fame. Think back to the early 90s when a young Usher Raymond IV was just a kid with a dream. Discovered by L.A. Reid, co-founder of LaFace Records, he signed a record deal at 14. This kid had skills that were undeniable, but just as he was about to launch his debut album, disaster struck. He lost his voice. Talk about a nightmare for any singer, especially a young talent on the brink of stardom. To salvage Usher's career, L.A. Reid made a bold move. He sent Usher off to crash at Diddy's place, whimsically dubbed Flavor Camp. It was like tossing a kid into the deep end of a pool full of music industry sharks, but Reed believed it was the lifeline Usher needed to rediscover his voice. Now, imagine stepping into Diddy's world, where the parties never stop, the vibe is electric, and everything feels larger than life. Diddy was already a major player with his bad boy records, home to legends like Biggie and Mary J. Blige. For Usher, this was a golden opportunity wrapped in a test of endurance. When he landed in New York, Usher was swept into a whirlwind of glitz and glam. Diddy's camp was like a crash course in the music biz, full of highs, lows, and all the drama you could possibly imagine. Usher had to adapt fast to the relentless pace of life in New York. He's mentioned in interviews that those days were some of the toughest of his life, pushing him to toughen up and find his footing in a brutal industry. But let's not sugarcoat it. It wasn't all tough love. Diddy played the role of mentor, helping shape Usher into the artist he would become. Their relationship was a complicated mix of guidance and hard lessons, marking the start of Usher's evolution as a musician and a person. Living at Flavor Camp transformed Usher, pushing him to grow up faster than he probably wanted to, exposing him to a life that was both mesmerizing and overwhelming. In interviews, Usher has alluded to some shady stuff going down during that time. There were some inappropriate things that happened. Not really, I mean, but hey, it was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Just imagine being 13 and witnessing a lifestyle that felt like it was straight out of a wild novel. Even if he didn't grasp it all, the memories definitely stuck with him. Fast forward to 2004, when Usher opened up to Howard Stern, reminiscing about the parties and girls at Diddy's place. He acknowledged the wild side, but also made a point. At 14 years old, you're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? Hell no. Usher has his principles, and you can bet he wouldn't want his kids caught in that kind of whirlwind. Even though he never officially called himself a victim, the age gap and Diddy's role as his mentor have raised some eyebrows. Under Diddy's wing, Usher honed his skills and learned the ropes of the industry. Everything from music production to stage presence. Diddy was a perfectionist, instilling in Usher a relentless work ethic and drive for success that would carry him through his career. The impact of Flavor Camp didn't just fade away. It echoed throughout Usher's work. His debut album dropped in 1994, blending smooth R&B with hip-hop influences that screamed Diddy's touch. Tracks like Can You Get With It and Think Of You showcased Usher's vocal prowess and his knack for blending genres. As Usher climbed the fame ladder, the lessons he learned from Diddy continued to resonate. His breakout album, My Way, released in 1997, launched him into superstardom. Hits like You Make Me Wanna and Nice and Slow took the world by storm, 
captivating fans everywhere. But beyond the music, Usher's charisma, style, and ability to light up a room were all influenced by Diddy. Usher's time at Flavor Camp also shaped his ventures outside of music. He got involved in philanthropy, using his platform to uplift communities and make a difference. Plus, his business savvy, sharpened under Diddy's watchful eye, led to success in fashion, film, and more. Now, let's address the elephant in the room. Diddy's been back in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. On September 16, 2024, he was arrested in New York City on federal charges, including sex trafficking and racketeering. These serious allegations sent shockwaves through the, the music industry. Diddy's lawyer, Mark Agnifilo, has rushed to defend him, asserting, Mr. Combs is a fighter. He's going to fight this to the end. He's innocent. But with bail denied multiple times, it's clear this situation is only getting messier. As the legal drama unfolds, Usher's name has resurfaced, igniting curiosity and speculation. He's been tight-lipped about the whole thing, but things heated up when his Twitter account mysteriously wiped thousands of tweets. When asked, Usher claimed his account was hacked, joking, account got hacked, and damn y'all ran with it. See you tonight. At Intuited Dome. Still, people can't help but wonder how the hackers managed to delete everything without leaving a trace. Looking back to 2004, Usher painted a vivid picture of his time at Diddy's, recounting the wild parties and chaos. But even now, he remains silent about Diddy's current situation, and that silence has sparked a wave of theories. Some fans speculate he's trying to distance himself, while others think he's grappling with the mixed emotions tied to their shared history. And let's not forget about Justin Bieber, whom Usher introduced to the industry. Rumors swirl that the dynamics between Bieber and Diddy might hold darker implications for the entertainment world. Allegations suggest Diddy used his influence to invite underage girls to his parties, creating a toxic environment that blurred the lines of acceptable behavior. As this story unfolds, it raises questions about whether Usher has learned from Diddy's controversial methods, especially given his own history of questionable moments. The saga of Usher's rise, intertwined with Diddy's influence, tells a tale that's as much about inspiration as it is about cautionary lessons. Now, let's pivot to the recent buzz around Usher's playful onstage interaction with Nicki Minaj, which has everyone talking. In a viral clip, Usher playfully smacked Nicki on the backside during a performance, sparking mixed reactions. Some thought it was all in good fun, while others, like Boozy Badaz, called it out as an overstep. The drama just keeps unfolding, and the tea is only going to get hotter. In a recent Instagram Live session that had everyone buzzing, Boozy couldn't help but spill the tea, saying, Did you see when he smacked Nicki Minaj? I gotta show you that. Nicki looked at him like, Are you crazy? His bewilderment was clear as he stressed that moments like these should only happen during rehearsals. If it ain't in rehearsals, you don't do it, period. I don't give a damn, he declared, emphasizing that Nikki looked genuinely caught off guard by Usher's unexpected move. Her reaction was like, did you just do that? I'm trying to understand why, he added, underscoring his belief that it definitely wasn't planned. Fans are divided. Some think Nikki's expression showed real irritation, while others speculate the whole thing was scripted for maximum showmanship. Boozy's fiery take highlights a much deeper conversation about consent and comfort in live performances. After all, when you're on stage, things can get pretty intimate, and it's crucial for everyone to be on the same page. Speaking of intimacy, Usher has a reputation for getting a little too cozy with his stage partners, this trend resurfaced during his 2024 Super Bowl halftime show when he and Alicia Keys sang My Boo. The way Usher hugged her sparked a frenzy online, with fans debating whether it crossed the line, especially since Keys has been happily married to music producer Swizz Beats since 2010. Usher, however, quickly dismissed the chatter when he appeared on The Breakfast Club, saying, It's all about love, and insisted there was no disrespect intended. Swizz, ever the supportive husband, echoed this sentiment, urging fans to focus on the breathtaking staging of the performance, 
rather than the social media chatter. So here we are, in a whirlwind of drama, mentorship, and all the glittering chaos that comes with fame. Usher's journey, shaped by his time with Diddy, is a testament to the complexities of navigating the music industry, filled with moments of brilliance and shadows, shadows of controversy. As we watch this saga unfold, one thing's for sure, the tea is piping hot and we're all just here for the ride. Rewatching the music video along with those old clips hits different. Seeing Justin Bieber's frantic push for yummy feels so out of sync with his usual vibe. It was like he was begging fans to stream it, tweeting and posting nonstop. But what made this song so special? Or maybe so pressured? Some fans think Bieber was under a ton of stress, whether it came from his team or the industry at large, to make Yummy a hit. There are even whispers that the track held a deeper, darker meaning for him, like a hidden cry for help disguised as a catchy pop tune. And just when you thought the drama couldn't get any crazier, Jaguar Wright comes back into the spotlight with some jaw-dropping allegations. She's claiming that Diddy is allegedly selling scandalous freak-off party videos on the dark web for a staggering $500 million, featuring heavy hitters like Justin Bieber, Drake, Chris Brown, and Nicki Minaj. While these claims are making waves in the industry, there's still no solid evidence to back any of it up. According to Wright, Diddy is in serious legal trouble, facing allegations of trafficking and racketeering, and has turned to selling these tapes to fund his defense. In a viral interview, she chillingly mentioned that the latest sale was on the dark web, which raises the stakes for everyone involved. Wright's shocking statements have reopened old wounds and sparked fresh conversations about Diddy's controversial reputation. She even brought up dark coin, a cryptocurrency that's supposedly used to keep these transactions safe, adding another layer of intrigue to this already sordid saga. And if that wasn't enough, she hinted at NFTs being part of the mix, with explicit content from these parties allegedly being auctioned off. Social media is buzzing, with users quick to call her out for dragging big stars into this mess without hard proof. One user even sarcastically asked how she accessed the dark web, while others lamented how wild rumors like these can spiral out of control. Despite all the noise, the celebrities mentioned have been quiet, leaving fans hungry for some clarity. For now, these allegations are just fueling speculation as Diddy's legal troubles continue to mount. As these claims resurface, they only add fuel to the fire surrounding Diddy's infamous parties. Whether there's any truth to Wright's words, or if it's just another wild rumor, remains to be seen. But one thing is crystal clear. This story is far from over, and it's keeping everyone in the entertainment world on high alert. What really went down at those freak-off parties? Diddy himself recently lamented, They don't want to give me a permit for the parties, man. They don't want me to throw the parties anymore, but we ain't gonna stop. We're going to keep having fun and bringing people together from all walks of life. You're going to hear about my parties. They're going to be shutting them down. They're probably going to be arresting me, doing all types of crazy things just cause we want to have a good time. The spotlight on Diddy's infamous freak-off parties has intensified, especially after his arrest on serious charges. These events, long rumored to involve extreme activities, are now coming under scrutiny as more details about what happened behind those closed doors are surfacing. Allegations from former partners, including his ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura, suggest that Diddy's parties were anything but glamorous. Reports indicate they revolved around drug-fueled activities where women were pressured into compromising situations. Cassie, in her lawsuit, recalled being forced into these freak-offs while Diddy called the shots, with these sessions sometimes lasting for days and often filmed, raising questions about Diddy's intentions. Prosecutors allege that Diddy exploited his power to pressure women into participating, often using intimidation. Rumors swirl about which big-name celebrities were invited to these parties, but concrete evidence linking them to illegal activities is still missing. The indictment paints a grim picture of Diddy's parties, filled with rampant drug use and extreme sexual acts that weren't just common, but encouraged. Reports suggest that the atmosphere at these events was chaotic, with little regard for consent. Some attendees have even come forward, 
claiming physical abuse, alleging that Diddy could get violent if things didn't go his way. The use of male escorts and the manipulation of vulnerable individuals were also recurring themes. What's even more alarming is the allegation that Diddy used these tapes for blackmail. Rumors suggest that these recordings were being sold on the dark web for an astonishing $500 million, featuring numerous high-profile celebrities. While Jaguar Wright has made these claims, no definitive proof has surfaced, leaving the public intrigued by the darker aspects of Diddy's parties. These freak-off parties cast a disturbing shadow over Diddy's once glamorous image as a music mogul. With more lawsuits and allegations coming to light, the true nature of these events is slowly being revealed, prompting many to wonder just how deep this scandal runs and who else might be implicated. With silence from the celebrities involved and Diddy denying all charges, the full truth remains a mystery. But the troubling allegations sketch a chilling picture of an industry titan operating in the shadows. The indictment has revealed unsettling details about Diddy's freak-off parties, now linked to his federal sex trafficking and racketeering charges. These events were allegedly elaborate, drug-fueled gatherings orchestrated by Diddy to fulfill his desires. The indictment paints a picture filled with coercion, violence, and manipulation, showcasing the lengths Diddy allegedly went to maintain control over those around him. At the heart of these allegations is the claim that when Diddy didn't get his way, he resorted to violence, using physical and emotional abuse to assert his dominance. This horrifying pattern speaks to a deeply troubling culture within the industry, where power dynamics often leave vulnerable individuals at the mercy of those in control. As the legal battles unfold, the music industry is watching closely. Will the truth emerge? What will happen to those involved? The answers remain uncertain, but one thing is clear. The stories surrounding Diddy's parties have ignited a crucial conversation about consent, power, and accountability in the entertainment world. Oh, honey, grab your popcorn because the drama surrounding Diddy is about to explode. The latest tea is piping hot, and it involves none other than Kevin Hart, who was spotted mingling at a freak-off party that had fans raising their eyebrows. One user on X threw some serious shade, saying, Kevin Hart is not what everybody thinks he is. Can we talk about the timing? Just days before the party, Hart shut down all his vegan restaurants, leading some to wonder if he's trying to distance himself from Diddy as the scandal deepens. Now, let's spill some serious tea. Footage of Diddy, Kevin Hart, and Usher at various events has unearthed a hidden world of wild parties that seem way darker than the glitzy facade suggests. A throwback clip from 2017 featuring Usher and Diddy jamming out to Kicking the Door has resurfaced, and oh boy, it's gone viral for all the wrong reasons. Social media users are dissecting every frame, with one pointing out, they're sweating, and I don't see no workout equipment. They look sick ASF. Like, what are they really up to? But it gets juicier. An anonymous former drug dealer just dropped some major bombshells about these infamous freak-offs. In an explosive interview with the NY Post, he claimed to have witnessed celebrities engaging in steamy encounters while high on drugs like ketamine and GHB. Imagine walking into a mansion and finding A-listers hooking up behind closed doors. He described the scene as a chaotic freak show, with rappers getting freaky in back rooms, and an atmosphere so wild it left him with zero respect for them. He recounted how Diddy, casually draped in a robe, led him through his mansion for a cocaine deal. You can practically hear the jaws dropping. Oh boy. Grab your drink because this wild ride just keeps getting wilder. So, this guy is dropping some serious tea about the crazy parties Diddy used to throw, saying even female rappers and sex workers were all in on the drug-fueled madness, contributing to the complete anything-goes atmosphere. But here's the kicker. Niji. He claims he never even saw Diddy getting involved with anyone. Meanwhile, Diddy's former party palace in the Hamptons is getting a major makeover in the reputation department. The feds have been busy raiding his homes in LA and Miami over some pretty heavy sex trafficking allegations. 
The new court docs paint a picture of these gatherings as freak-offs, with elaborate sexual performances that Diddy supposedly orchestrated and filmed. Just when you think it can't get any crazier, in February 2024, producer Rodney Lil Rod Jones decided to shake things up by hitting Diddy with a $30 million civil lawsuit. He's claiming that Diddy had secret cameras all over the place, capturing intimate moments of his high-profile guests. According to Jones, Diddy was allegedly pressuring young people into sexual acts for cash and hiring sex workers, making it sound like a Hollywood playground gone horribly wrong. His bombshell? That Diddy made partygoers sign NDAs to keep the whole chaotic scene under wraps. And let's talk about that clip that went viral of Diddy and Meek Mill in a compromising position. Intimate sounds and all. At first, everyone thought it was just a hoax, but it sparked some serious conversations online. Meek Mill didn't waste any time shutting down the chatter, insisting he isn't gay, and expressing frustration over how damaging these rumors can be for powerful figures. Remember Diddy's chilling words from a 2002 late night with Conan O'Brien appearance? He described his ideal party setup, saying it needed beautiful women, of course, beautiful men for the ladies. Back then, it felt lighthearted, but now it just sends shivers down your spine. When Conan brought up how dangerous it sounded, Diddy just laughed it off, calling it a little kinky. Now, with accusations flying that he forced women into freak-off sessions with male escorts and recorded everything, things are looking a lot darker. A shocking indictment claims Diddy has been drugging and manipulating women into submission, with parties stretching on for days, leaving guests needing IV fluids to recover. Oh, and let's not overlook the arms cache the feds found during their raids. Three AR-15s, along with other firearms and ammo. Like, what kind of twisted party is this? As the legal storm brews, some brave souls are stepping forward. Rachel Kennedy, a former dancer, recounted how Diddy lured her into one of those freak-offs. She shared a harrowing tale of being manhandled by his bodyguard while they were high on cocaine, forced to watch endless Jennifer Lopez music videos. When things got a little too close for comfort, the head of security burst in, leaving her scared and questioning Diddy's power over everyone around him. And then there's Cassie Ventura, Diddy's ex. CCTV footage from 2016 shows Combs attacking her in a hotel hallway, grabbing her and throwing her down. Cassie later filed a federal lawsuit detailing years of physical abuse, claiming he controlled every aspect of her life. Just one day after filing, the lawsuit was settled, and many are left wondering what really happened behind the scenes. Adding fuel to the fire, Lil Rod Jones claims he was coerced into sexual acts and drug use while working for Diddy. Other women have come forward with accusations stretching back over 30 years. With the latest charges against him, including trafficking and racketeering, Diddy is gearing up for a massive legal battle. As the legal drama unfolds, Diddy's attorney is gearing up for a fight, claiming he's ready to prove his innocence. But with evidence piling up, over 90 cell phones, tons of explicit videos, and multiple testimonies, the road ahead looks pretty bumpy for him. So keep your popcorn handy, because this saga is far from over. As the world watches, the dark underbelly of celebrity culture is being laid bare, one freak off at a time. Will Diddy's empire crumble under the weight of these allegations, or can he wiggle out of this mess? Only time will tell, but for now, the tea is piping hot, and it's spilling everywhere.